so what we are doing for calibration for those who are not used with that, we are measure, measuring the time uh, taken by the signal to cross the antenna, the antenna cable and the receiver before the measurement is done uh, by the internal clock of the receiver. We have also to know the, the, the time delay between the internal clock of the receiver and the external clock that we want to compare. So <coughs> some of these hardware delays are frequency dependent, which is the case for the antenna and for the receiver. So normally the cable, the antenna cable should not be frequency dependent, but if there are some torsion in the cable, it can be. So we have to be cautious also with the cable. Uh, so then finally, if you compare your clock, the, the clock solution, it's the solution based on the measurements, which are referred to the time here, corrected for all the hardware delays. So I will show you what we are doing in the UTC community or TAI community for the calibration of our equipment. And then I will show you how these, the results from the calibration compare with what is provided by the IGS in the IONX uh, solutions. So what we are doing in the TI community, we have one reference which has been in fact calibrated absolutely with the, using simulator uh, but uh, about 10 years ago. So we maintain the, this reference. We don't know exactly how it's now, but we maintain it in several locations. And from a reference, we have a traveling station that we compared first to the reference. So we have the, hardware, the difference between hardware delay of the traveling with respect to the reference. <laughs> then we move the traveling station to the, sta to the different stations to be calibrated, where we have the difference of hardware delay between the traveling and the station to be calibrated. Then to make a closure, we go back to the reference to be sure that uh, there are some stability in the traveling equipment. And from the difference of hardware delay between this station and the traveling and the reference and the traveling, we get the um, hardware delay of this station with respect to the reference. That is what we are doing in the network. The uncertainty that we have on this calibration on each signal is 1.2 nanosecond. And so as there are some common uh, parameters in the to sort of common contribution to both P1 and P2, we can say that the uncertainty on the difference P1 minus P2 is at the level of one nanosecond. So, but of course, as I said, the reference has been determined long time ago. We don't know exactly how it is. And we would like to know if the P1 minus P2 reference is corresponding to the reality or not. And for that, we have looked at the possibility compared with uh, the products from the IONIX. So from the timing community, we directly determine P1, DP1, so the hardware delay of P1 and P2, to get the difference. In the IGS community, what we get is the DCBs, P1 minus P2, but with a zero mean constraint on the satellite. So what we have is DP1 minus DP2, with a bias which is the same for all stations, which is the average of the DCB of the satellite. So if we want to compare both, we can only compare links between stations in order to cancel this average of uh, satellite DCBs. And that is what we have. We here compare the, D the DCB difference between different stations and PTBB, which is in Germany. And in, uh, the, the dots corresponds to the DCB found in the IONX file of code, and the line corresponds to what we have from calibration in the timing community. And looking at the numerical differences, you see here these differences are all lower than one nanosecond, which is exactly the uncertainty on the calibration, so we are well in this uncertainty. The thing is that here we have just compared link between stations, so we cannot see the, the reference accuracy or uh, um, because it's cancelled in the difference. So what we have done is to compute again the DCB using the INX maps, but 
in order to, do, to not have this zero average uh, on the satellite DCB, we use the TGD, which are broadcast in the navigation message and which are based on accurate uh, absolute calibration done by JPL. So what we are doing is to use the pseudo range. We correct also for the antenna phase differences um, for the L1 and L2 signals. We remove the ionospheric delay using some tech maps, and we use these TGDs from the satellite. And that is what we have, for example, for station P PTBB. So DP1 minus DP2 that we have computed is in black, and the DCBs from uh, IGS here moved by five nanoseconds are shown in red, and you see some long-term variation which are due to the fact that there are changes in the constellation of the GPS satellite, and hence there are a variation of the average uh, P1 minus P2 of the satellites. And so that, is, that variation is not due to the receiver PTB, but to the, um, the average DCB of satellites. So with this DP2 uh, DP1 minus DP2 that we have computed with the IONX maps, we can to do two things. First, verify the accuracy of the reference P1 minus P2 of the calibration, and then look at the long-term stabilities of these, uh, these P1 minus P2. Concerning the accuracy, the first thing we have to note is that when using different IONX maps, we have some biases in the P1 minus P2 that we compute. These biases vary also with location, as you can see here for station in North America, middle of Europe, China. You, we have different biases between the results obtained with the different maps. So we quantify these different biases and we see that they are all lower than 1.4 nanosecond peak to peak. So we know that if we use our P1 minus P2 computed from IONX, we will not be able to quantify the accuracy of the calibration P1 minus P2 at better than a nanosecond level. And this is the comparison now for the different station here. Uh, oh, the timing, I don't have my mouse. Uh, for different stations, so in this case, it's not a link between stations. It's directly the, for the P1 minus P2 for the station compared to what is computed from the IONX. And you see that it's for the last calibration campaign of 2016. We are, for all the stations, well below the nanosecond level. So we can say that there is a very good agreement with, between our reference for the calibration in P1 minus P2 and what we can obtain from the uh, IONX maps. Now, the second thing is that we are looking at is the long-term stability of P1 minus P2 in our stations. In fact, uh, on the long term, we have observed some variations between the time transfer solution obtained by two different techniques. One is GPS, common view, uh, common view or PPP, and the other one is a two-way satellite time and frequency transfer. And for example, between a link between OP in Paris and PTB in Germany, we have in six years a variation of six nanoseconds. Between NIST and PTB, we have long-term variation. It's not a drift, but peak to peak, we have five nanoseconds. And so it can be variation of the hardware delay of the two-way or of GPS, we don't know. So we would like to see here, we can look at the P1 minus P2 stability to see if that could be an explanation. So we look at the long-term variation of uh, P1 minus P2 computed from the IG, uh, IONX maps. And for example, here you have three stations in Europe and you see clearly that there is a signal that is common to all the results. So that comes clearly from the IONX products that have been used. So what we have to do again is to make difference between stations and with this difference between station, we can see, for example, OPMT minus PTB is in black here and Brooks minus PTB in green. We see here a variation which is only present in this, in this green curve, so which is probably a jump in the P1 minus P2 hardware delay of Brooks. Here in the black curve, if I find my mouse, here, it's clearly a, variation, a jump in the hardware delay of OPMT. 
Here we have both variation in OPMT and PTB. So we are able here to identify jumps of 200 picoseconds in the P1 minus P2 of the receiver. So to conclude, the uh, computation of uh, P1 minus P2 from the IONX allows to look at the stability of the P1 minus P2 station hardware delay. But if we only look at one station, we could not see variation smaller than two nanoseconds because there are effects from the IONX. But if we compare station with station, we can see so small jumps as small as 200 picoseconds as I had just shown. And concerning the accuracy of the reference P1 minus P2 in the TI network, we can see that we are well within the 1.4 nanosecond uncertainty of combined um, IONX uh, contribution plus calibration uncertainty uh, because all the difference between the calibration and the P1 minus P2 computed from IONX are well below one nanosecond. So, but we have to note that uh, all the computation based on the IONX that we have done are based on the TGDs, which are transmitted by the satellite. So we have to be confident in these values. Thank you for your attention.